Thanks, Graham, and thanks everyone for having me. As Graham mentioned, I'm Alison Scotland. I work for Standards Australia and I'm responsible for the building and construction sector. Uh, it's a real privilege to join you here today and thank you to the ABCB for inviting us along. It's a really great opportunity to connect with you all and, and to hear uh, from you about what's important to you in the building sector. So my presentation, as Graeme mentioned, is going to be roughly around 20 minutes. I'm going to start off um, giving you a bit of an explanation about um, who we are and what we do. Uh, then I'm going to go into an update on a selection of standards. There are, as Graeme mentioned, there are so many changes uh, to NCC 2019. Uh, and then give you a little bit of a snippet about what Standards Australia is doing into the future. So starting off, um, talking about how standards are referenced in the National Construction Code, um, the key point is, um, just like the verification methods, uh, the using or following a standard is just one tool um, to show that you meet the performance requirement. So standards support the implementation of building policy. Um, they're not necessarily um, the be all and end all. So, and just like uh, Graham mentioned about uh, the masonry 3700, um, even if you just follow the standard, you might not actually be meeting uh, regulation. So that's just an important thing to consider. Who develops standards? You do. Uh, we are a member-based organisation at Standards Australia. We have hundreds of technical committees developing standards across all sectors of the Australian economy. So in terms of how you can be involved, uh, you can be involved through your membership of organisations that contribute to the drafting of technical committees. So it might be the HIAs or the Master Builders or the Institute of Building Surveyors. Um, you can also comment on draft standards when they become available for public consultation. So on our website, um, we are continually advertising standards that, that are available for download and commenting. So you can provide your feedback on draft standards in that way. If you also have new ideas or, or feel that a standard needs to change in a way, you can actually develop and prepare a proposal uh, and submit it to Standards Australia for either a new standard or a revised standard. And that's my day job. So you come and approach me for the building and construction sector. The development of standards that are referenced in the NCC, they need to go through a really robust process. That process does take some time, so what we do is we try to align uh, where possible with ABCB processes because uh, we have to follow their protocols. Um, you know, if you're changing a reference standard, by default you could be changing law, so we need to go through a, a really rigorous process. So just like anything, we need to prioritise our work. We need to focus on addressing issues and problems in the industry and provide solutions that will address those problems. Uh, we go through the same protocols. We need to meet rigorous pro protocols. <clears throat> Pardon me in terms of how those standards are drafted. We go through the same uh, periods of public consultation where we go out to the community for comment and we need to resolve all of those, those comments when we receive them. And then we have the same uh, approval mechanisms that we need to go through in terms of um, getting the document approved for referencing. So moving on uh, to the actual reference standards, and as Graham alluded to, there, there are a significant number of changes uh, to do with reference standards uh, in the NCC 2019. I'm going to talk about the Australian standards only. As you know, there's other standards or technical specifications that get referenced, like the FPAA documents. Um, I'll just be focusing on Australian standards for now. Um, Graeme also mentioned there is a comprehensive summary of all of the changes to all the standards um, that will be available on the ABCB website uh, under the seminars link, so definitely check that out. Um, that's, that's the exhaustive list. I've only got 20 minutes, so I can't cover them all right now. Um, I'll also link, um, you know, if you, you need to know what standards are referenced in 2019, Schedule 4 has the list. Uh, Schedule 4 also indicates any transition periods that apply or grandfather clauses. So Schedule 4 is your important reference there. 
Um, in terms of Australian standards um, that have uh, been referenced in NCC 2019, Again, a significant number of changes. You might have standards referenced for the very first time, but might not necessarily be new. So the standard on um, earth retaining structures, that's actually a 2002 standard, but it's referenced for the first time in NCC 2019. We have a lot of standards that have been removed because they're no longer relevant to the performance requirements. We have uh, changes, we might have new additions, so revisions of existing standards. And we also have um, recognition of some of the reference standards that have amendments to them. So again, a huge number of changes. I can't go through them all, but what I'm giving you is a snapshot of what's changed. Um, with that in mind, um, in terms of how my slides will be presented today, uh, I will be listing a, a main summary of, of changes uh, on the screen. I'm not going to read that out because that's really boring. Uh, what I'll do is provide you a bit of context about the development of that standard. For a, a full list, um, rather than going out and buying the standard and then finding it's not relevant for you, you can actually go to uh, our distributor's website and you can actually download a preview of every standard. And in that preview, if you actually go to the preface, especially of um, a revision, generally the preface uh, will outline um, at least a general idea of what has changed. Uh, with the standards I'm talking about in this session, there's quite a significant list of, of changes that have occurred to some of the standards. If a standard is new, you can look at the contents page. So, so you do have the ability to seek out information yourself um, before you make any purchasing decisions. Okay, so moving into um, my slides, I realise I haven't structured my presentation like volume two in the theoretical order of constructing a house, um, but I'll do my best. I'm starting with structural standards, so I'm on the right track. Um, just like uh, the ABCB slides in the corner, I will have reference to volume one or two if it's referenced there. Um, as mentioned before, the standards referenced in Volume 3 will be the subject of a separate webcast that will be available on the ABC website after the seminar series have uh, finished. So I won't be dealing with um, Volume 3, but I know from the hands that didn't raise, we don't have any plumbers in the room, so that's okay. So moving on to concrete structures. This is a massive standard, um, you know, 300 odd pages. Um, obviously on one PowerPoint slide, I can't list all the changes that have occurred to this standard. Um, but what I can say is um, what has happened in this revision um, is the fruit of a vast amount of research that has occurred in the industry uh, since the last edition. Um, a lot of the research was um, tackling specific issues such as um, durability or acid sulfate soils. So there's a lot more sort of knowledge that has been incorporated into the standard. Um, in addition, uh, the standards or the technical committee preparing the standard, they've recognised a lot of advances in technology and they've uh, attempted to provide uh, users of the standard and practitioners with more options, more design options um, for um, design um, of concrete structures. Um, they've also tried to cater for more products available um, in the market now, um, for instance, the, the fibre reinforced concrete. Um, so hopefully with uh, the users of the standard will be able to um, see that there are a lot more solutions available for them to use as, as a DTS. On to masonry, I did mention before that this uh, standard is actually referenced in NCC 2019 with conditions. Uh, I won't repeat the conditions, but know that they exist. So um, take care to, uh, when you're using the standard, to, to also note um, the National Construction Code requirements. Uh, the, again, this committee um, was responding to a lot of industry research that's happened since the last edition. Um, there's a lot more updated technology um, that the committee has um, absorbed into this um, revision. 
Uh, there's more realistic strength predi predictions. Uh, and the committee tried to incorporate the growing use of practices such as dry stack and thin bed hollow masonry. So um, there's a lot more um, within the standard. Uh, this particular standard also aligns with, with what has already been published in 4773 um, for small buildings. So it's, it's aligned with um, 4773. And if I do go too fast, uh, these slides will be available on the website. So um, I know, yeah, no writing, you can take photos, of course. Um, on to composite structures. So uh, the design and construction of uh, steel frame buildings, um, it requires continuous composite beams, um, composite columns, connections and slabs. The 2003 version of the composite structures standard only actually looked at simply supported beams. So the work that the technical committee did to produce this edition um, was quite significant. Um, this list obviously isn't exhaustive. Um, there's a lot of work that the committee did to incorporate um, you know, these additional requirements around um, beams, connections, slabs. Um, so again, I, I suggest you look at the preface because this committee has listed out um, all the changes one by one, or at least a, a summary of the changes and inclusions. Um, the main objective uh, that the technical committee had in this instance was to develop a fit for purpose document that could be readily used by industry um, and um, you know, achieving the, the, the minimum levels of safety needed, but also allowing um, for innovative materials that are now in the market. Um, we also note that there are some really helpful appendices in this new edition um, with a few design flow charts. So um, practitioners using this standard will hopefully be aided by those appendices. On to cold form steel structures. Um, we see in the market now that there is a continued um, or an increasing use of, say, um, flat pack systems or modular construction. So um, again, this committee did a lot of work to update uh, 4600 to ensure that it reflects um, current practice. The committee did a lot of alignment with um, a US standard out there and it's NAS S100 specification. Uh, but what they have done is incorporate a lot of Australian and New Zealand research because obviously um, we reference um, a vast number of Australian standards in the document, so the research needs to align with what um, we know in our industry and use in our industry. Um, again, a lot more has changed than what I have put up on the screen, so I do suggest as a first instance to look at the preface if this relates to you. Now onto fire standards, uh, which is a hot topic to try and put in a few puns, <laughs> dad jokes. Um, so probably one of the most, or one of the higher public interest standards that we have is uh, 3959, so the construction of buildings in bushfire prone areas. Uh, with this standard, the technical committee is continually receiving feedback from industry, from the community. So um, there's a lot of work that uh, goes into the development of this standard and the committee is um, moving on a bit of an incremental approach. So um, with every new addition, um, they will incorporate a particular amount of um, research and development. Um, but know that it's, it's stage by stage. So um, uh, just to let you know that there is still work underway um, on the next sort of list of priorities. Um, obviously, you know, we've, we're right in the middle of bushfire season. So um, the particular purpose for this revision was um, to incorporate, incorporate a lot of research on the performance of buildings in bushfires. Um, there's a lot more um, knowledge about this um, now. Um, and then reflecting on what's been happening with NCC 2019, a lot of the work um, done by the committee was actually about readability. Um, ho hopefully uh, phrasing um, the same requirements, but in a way that can be more consistently interpreted across the country. Uh, um, you know, and, and in addition, the committee tried to 
again, increase options available for, for practitioners, but achieve those same levels of safety that are needed um, with this important standard. Another item to note that this standard um, is also published in conjunction with updated test methods. So the 1530.8.1 um, and 0.8.2. So those test methods are also updated at the same time. So if that is of interest to you, um, we've got 3959 as well as the test methods um, new additions. Moving on, because there was a lot uh, happening in the fire space, our fire committees were extremely in, uh, busy over the last three years. Uh, obviously, um, some big changes um, to the 1670 series. Uh, we've got um, a lot of the work um, with the 1670 series, uh, particularly, um, was the alignment internationally with a lot of international product standards that are out there. The benefit of aligning internationally is obviously um, the reduction of costs. So if you're importing product that isn't manufactured in Australia, uh, having to retest or recertify to Australian standards is obviously an impost and a cost impost. So the idea of alignment is that we, we um, you know, can participate in the global market. Um, a lot of um, the work was to sort of fix ambiguities. Um, with part one, there was a, a significant amount of work um, to deal with uh, false alarm mitigation technologies. So, so there's a lot in these standards. Um, again, look to the preface um, for more information. Uh, and you'll also note um, part four with the new EWIS name that Graham mentioned earlier in the session. Uh, especially with these standards, um, there are transition periods in relation to the product standards and, and the testing. So look to Schedule 4 for more information about that. Uh, I, don't, I, I didn't want to cover amendments because they're usually smaller than the significant revisions that are out there, but this is quite an important one um, to highlight for you. Uh, 5113, there has been a name change. So um, just be aware that that's happened. Uh, this amendment also uh, included the addition of a new appendix, and the appendix outlines the relationship of the standard to the NCC um, so that hopefully it can assist people to achieve compli compliance. I know there was a lot of um, discussion in the industry about debris criteria and what that meant um, for compliance with the performance requirements in the code. So um, if you've already purchased 5113, you should be able to access your copy of the amendment for free. If you're purchasing 5113, in the future, that amendment has already been incorporated into the content, including the name change. On to my catch-all. Um, I know there's a lot more that I need to cover, but um, I'll, I'll do my best. Uh, the first one of the, the catch-all category uh, is um, AS5216. So it looks like a brand new standard that's been incorporated into the code, but it's actually not. Uh, you, um, I don't know if any of you have been using the technical specification 101 um, for fasteners. Uh, that was referenced in the 2016 edition of the NCC. Um, the reason um, it was a technical specification was to achieve speed, speed to market um, to address a critical safety area um, about anchorage into concrete. Uh, now that we've had another three years, um, we've been able, or the technical committee has been able to confirm that as an Australian standard and go through the, the robust process of an Australian standard development. In relation to changes, it's usually um, minor editorial, so not much has changed since um, a, uh, SATS 101. On to um, the metal roofing standards. So um, we, uh, Graham was mentioning all the work that the ABCB has done uh, in relation to um, metal roofs and, and cladding. Um, that required a significant piece of work um, with this particular standard and committee. Uh, the previous edition of this standard was in 1992. 
Um, so we've had roughly 30 years um, without any changes. Metal roofs have quadrupled in that time. So again, this committee has a significant piece of work um, and a lot of changes um, to get the standard up to speed and actually to um, not um, or to reflect the testing requirements that are in the NCC. So the previous edition um, uh, didn't even meet the, the testing requirements um, for, uh, that the NCC required. So uh, there's a lot of work. Um, again, this list is not exhaustive, so I do recommend looking at the preface if you want to know more about the changes. Um, the main uh, changes are the incorporation of current test methods uh, and practices in the industry and bringing it up to speed. On to 4200. So Graham mentioned earlier um, all the work that the ABCB has done on condensa condensation management. Uh, the updates to this series um, is also a reflection of that. Um, you know, there, there have been quite a large percentage of warranty claims um, due to poor installation practices and inappropriate uh, product selection. So um, the aims of this committee were to um, improve the readability, make sure that the interpretation was more consistent. Um, so there's a few changes there. Uh, I'll also note that uh, this standard ties in with the transition period for the energy efficiency efficiency provisions, so again look to Schedule 4 with that. Uh, also um, uh, moving on to 4859, uh, again these are um, tied into the energy efficiency provisions. The original intent of um, the original 4859 standard was to provide a consolidated reference of uh, for assessing the thermal performance of a number of different products. Um, what this um, new edition does, or these new additions do, is separate that out. Um, as a designer previously, you had to go through the standard to find the little bits of sections that um, apply to you. What the committee has done is separate that and try to make it a bit more um, understandable. So if you're a designer, you can actually just refer to part two rather than trying to search through, through the document and see what's applicable. Um, the, a lot of the revision um, was to try to assist practitioners in uh, selecting the correct product for the system. Uh, so hopefully uh, this standard goes um, some way to helping practi practitioners use these products in the industry. So, of course, I can't cover all the standards. If you do have any questions about particular standards, um, please approach me after the session and I'd be happy to give you more information. But again, um, the comprehensive list of changes, deletions, amendments is available in the seminars section on the ABCB website. But a little bit about uh, Standards Australia and what we're doing uh, in the future. We, we have recognised the need that uh, people no longer want to bring you know, a book or have a PDF with them on a building site. Um, we realise that standards need to be searchable. Um, you want to access it on your phone and um, not have to you know, figure around, um, play around with tables to, to view them all. So we launched the incubator about a year and a half ago and what that is, is um, we get to experiment and test um, a bunch of different ideas to do with process, um, so the development of standards and products, so um, how, how people use our content. In terms of processes, um, we've got the usual development of an Australian standard, but we're also testing ideas such as crowdsourcing. So one of the projects we're doing is we're crowdsourcing the development of information about building commissioning. So if you're interested, um, please find me in the break or, or send me an email. If you want to participate, we'd love to, to have you. In terms of product development, we're looking at visual standards, we're looking at digital standards, so the, the standards that actually do fit to your phone. We're looking at calculators and workflows. Uh, we really want to uh, improve the ways that you can access our content and understand our content. 
We're also working with the ABCB on a project uh, to do with uh, standardised terms and definitions. So, uh, interestingly enough, terms and definitions aren't particularly standard across our standards. Uh, and this um, proof of concept exercise um, has tested that. And so, if you actually search a term, um, we can see uh, how that term is defined, whether it in, is in the NCC or whether it's in an Australian, a referenced Australian standard or in other sort of documentation. Uh, and we also want to sort of give an idea about hierarchy. So um, if you're looking at something like a wet area, um, what actually takes precedence in terms of definitions? Um, this is a, a great proof of concept. It will help us align more as an industry and um, keep your eye out um, for further tests in the next months and years as, as we try and develop um, solutions to make your life a bit easier. Standards Australia is continually working on making thing, things easier for you to interact with us. So amongst uh, a range of initiatives that we're, we have been doing over the years, we've had our technical governance review where we're looking at our systems and processes to try and make things uh, more transparent for the industry and for the community. We've got the Connect platform for committee members to contribute with us a lot easier. We have a better uh, com uh, public comment platform for anyone, any member of the pub public to comment on drafts, release for public consultation. And we're also looking at our next gen program, which is encouraging the next generation of contributors to standards. So if you do have any questions about this, please feel free to contact me. Now, before I move into questions, I thought I would deal with the elephant in the room, uh, a question that we are asked at pretty much every single seminar, and the question is, when will standards be free? So with that in mind, I thought I'd uh, address it right now with this. And the message is to all of you that uh, Standards Australia has won the right to move beyond exclusive distribution arrangements with SAR Global. That is a landmark uh, achievement for our organisation and we're really excited about the future. Uh, we had an independent arbitrator uh, assess what market terms do look like in the future and the future is non-exclusive. So over the course of the next year, standards will be working extremely hard uh, consulting with industry, consulting with the government, consulting on what exactly that future looks like. So there's a lot of things to consider, a lot of uh, different models that we need to understand. So please be patient with us as we work over the coming year. If you're interested in talking with us about our distribution models, please contact us and I'd be happy to forward you on to our executive so that you can have these discussions. But in terms of the free standards question, my answer to you is watch this space. We're really excited about this opportunity, uh, but we're working through those models uh, about how we can maintain our relevance for you and be more effective in the way you can access and use content for the future. Moving on to questions. Any questions? No? Thank you very much.